Hello everyone, quickly before we get into the video, if you could like and subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, help get this video pushed out there and help it through the YouTube algorithm, I will be ever eternally grateful. Now let's get on to the video. Hello and welcome back your lovely faces to another video here on the channel. Today we're going to take a look at an actually a very good article that was posted yesterday on the Express. It's actually an interview with Greg Ellis, Johnny Depp's friend and Johnny Depp's co-star in the Pirates of the Caribbean films. He also did a fantastic live stream last night regarding Father's Day. It was with Stevie, Les, Soups and a whole host of, host of other people and it was a really good stream. I'm just sad I couldn't have made it. But we're going to go into the article. Johnny Depp is mischaracterized. His Pirates co-star on Fantastic Beasts, Firing and more. Johnny Depp's Pirates of the Caribbean co-star and staunch defender Greg Ellis has spoken exclusively with the Express on how he thinks the Jack Sparrow actor has been mischaracterized by many and shared his thoughts on the star's Fantastic Beasts 3 firing and future in Hollywood. Last year, Johnny Depp lost his liable lawsuit against The Sun, which had referred to him as this. Following the case's outcome, Warner Brothers asked a 58-year-old to resign from his role as Grindelwald in FB3 being recast with Mads. Since then, some fans have continued to show support for him, including a couple of his Pirates of the Caribbean co-stars, in Mr. Gibbs actor Kevin McNally and Greg Ellis, who played Lieutenant Commander Theodore Groves across three of the movies. First of all, it's not some fans have continued. He has millions of fans who are following him, and are still there for him. His Instagram is now over 10.1 million people who are following him. You're telling me that most of them hate him? Nah, most of them, in fact, I'd probably go to say nearly every single one of those followers are all on his site. Then you got everyone else on Twitter who's supporting him on Facebook. So when an, an article like this says that, it's like, oh, you do a good thing by putting out an article, but then you go, oh yeah, some fans. No, all of his fans. Now Johnny Depp has written the introduction to Greg Ellis' new book, The Respondent, exposing the cartel of family law, since both have had difficulty experiences in the US divorce courts. Speaking exclusively with The Express, Ellis has said he's very supportive of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. I'm mindful he's still navigating his way through the legal system on many fronts, so the details of that I don't talk about much, but I have been and will continue to be vocal. Many people have mischaracterized him. Asked what he thought of Depp being fired from FB3, Ellis said, Part of it is fear of media, which is 100% true. They just literally, they got rid of him because they didn't want the backlash. And that is kind of sad, because they're out there, they're giving all, well, some publicity to her. And the amount of backlash people are getting from that, all these news media outlets, you know, it's kind of like, oh, right, okay. It's even forced James Wan, the director, and a couple of other people who are associated with Aquaman 2 to shut off comments. So when that happens, you know they're getting quite a lot of stick. And to be honest with you, it's not James Wan's fault. It's not any of them. It's the people in Warner Brothers, the higher-ups, the bean counters, the ones who are saying, oh, yeah, don't listen to them. We're going to believe her no matter what. Whether it is broadcast, whether it be movie studios, whether it be publishing, there is a fear that the perception of someone is negative, so they don't want to be associated with it. I do find it ironic that a man who is revered and loved and respected by so many people in the entertainment industry and have nothing but great things to say about him should be forcibly removed from a movie. As for a Hollywood return, the 53-year-old reckons that the Jack Sparrow star will be back in some form before too long. Ellis also said, do I think he's going to come back? Yes. To what degree, I'm not sure. There's this reputation savaging that's going on. This victimhood culture, where victimhood is the new social currency and its economy is booming. And it's been inflated. Last year, the Hollywood reporter that Disney barked at Pirates of the Caribbean producer Jerry Bruckheimer's suggestion of Depp making a cameo as Jack Sparrow in Margaret Robbie's upcoming spin-off, which, to be honest with you, it's not going to make a ton of money, that's not, because, well, the Pirates of the Caribbean is Jack Sparrow. It's like having a Mrs. Doubtfire film without Robin Williams. It just wouldn't go. However, an actual Pirate 6 is also in the works, 
although it doesn't seem likely that Depp would be cast given the controversies surrounding his personal life. Nevertheless, Ellis backs Johnny Depp returning as Captain Jack in 6. He told the Express last year, I think for Pirate 6, in an ideal world, every character who the fans have fallen in love with will be able to come back to kind of wrap everything up. Ultimately, it comes down to screenplay and story. If Jack Sparrow isn't a key, if not the key element, to wrapping up a multi-billion dollar franchise, is it not akin to not having Captain Kirk in the original Star Trek? And Greg is 100% correct there again. Everything that has been going on, it's like, right, come on. You want to go forward and say, we're going to make a Pirates of the Caribbean 6. But we're not having Johnny Depp in it, we're not going to have Captain Jack Sparrow. Even though Captain Jack Sparrow is Pirates. While Mr. Gibbs actor McNally said on Ellis' podcast, the respondent in December, yes, is a simple answer to if Depp should be in Pirate 6. My feelings about this are very complex, because in a sense there was a slight feeling that the franchise itself had played out a little bit, so a reboot isn't a reasonable idea. I don't think a reboot, if you concentrate on younger characters, should still exclude Jack Sparrow. I came up with the idea that there should be some young person searching for Sparrow with Mr. Gibbs helping find him. And then we find Jack Sparrow at the end. It wouldn't involve too much work from Jack Sparrow, but who knows. Having some experience now, I don't know why they made the decisions that they make. And that's very true as well, because there's been so much stuff coming out regarding the Pirates films and what they did in the last one. It's like, it's like, come on. You know, the Fountain of Youth, don't get me wrong, it was a great idea. But the execution of it was absolutely dreadful. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tells No Tales, the last one. Or here in the UK, Salazar's Revenge for some unknown reason. To me, that is one of the best entries in the franchise. For me, the first one is still the best. Then it goes number two, number five, number three, then number four. For me, those are the best ones because they're just so goddamn entertaining. But it's sad to see that if they think... Oh yeah, we can just get rid of these characters and we'll you know, we'll make money or whatever. Look what happened with the Star Wars sequels. You know, they literally ruined the characters of the original. Just so they can make their characters look better. Doesn't work like that and it should not work like that. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for future updates and I'll see each and every one of you soon.